Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, I'm gonna fertilize my burr oaks. A few buckets here. And I'm gonna fill these. One, I'm going to fill with urea, which is pure nitrogen. Pull this out and we'll take a look at it. It's nitrogen pellets. Pure nitrogen. And the other is 201010 with sulfur. I don't need a whole lot of that. I do need a good amount of this. I wish I had, well actually I do, let's just take this stuff out of here and we'll probably fill this one with nitrogen. That's way too much but I don't know. We'll fill this one anyways and we can dump it back if we have too much. I only need right about a pound for each one of the big trees. And then the ones along the road here, those are going to get the 201010, and those are going to get a little more than a half pound. And then I have some much smaller trees, those are going to get 201010 as well. And we'll just kind of eyeball the amount for them. Some of them are really tiny trees. I got to hit all of the burr oaks, and I have them spread out. They're along the road. Some of those are pretty darn big. Some of them, the ones in the woods, are fairly small. I got some back here, and I got some way at the other end of the property there. I may have to come back and get more of one or the other, but we should be good to start. On top of the fertilizer, I'm just going to need a shovel. What I'm going to do is spade the nitrogen in. The 201010, I'm just going to toss on the ground around the trees. That's for the smaller trees. The bigger trees had a balanced fertilizer last year, and that should last for several more years. So all they need is nitrogen. All right, let's get a scoop and start filling these up. I had to come back in here because it is really gusty out there. I almost forgot I had this. I got this at Tractor Supply, I believe and it's for feed but this works really well for fertilizer as well so i have the requirements written down i'm not gonna exactly go by that i'm gonna give the bigger trees a pound and the ones a bit smaller three quarters of a pound and then the little tiny trees i'm gonna give a half pound so i'm gonna grab as much fertilizer as i think i need and we'll get going I'll show you this 201010 real quick. The white pellets are the same as that, they're urea. The orange pellets are potash. And the brown pellets are, I believe these are MAP, which is mono ammonium phosphate, which is the phosphorus, and it has some nitrogen in it as well. And all in all, it comes to 201010. All right, got to see if we got a cover for that one. Oh, I probably don't. Hopefully, it doesn't tip over. Well, we're going to have to take our chances. We're going to need this cup. And you want to keep the urea covered because it flashes off. The atmosphere is, what is it, 90% nitrogen? Yeah. So it would add to the normal atmosphere, but 
you don't want to lose any of your fertilizers. Okay. And where did I put my cup? There it is. And I need a shovel. And a tape measure. You don't want to go closer than 30 inches with any dug in fertilizer. Like I said, we're just gonna put a spade into the ground, push it forward to make a little trench, and then fill that with urea. And then the 2010-10, we're just gonna put it in the cup there, measure it out and sprinkle it around the tree. That can get closer than 30 inches because you're doing it on, on tiny little trees that don't even have roots that go out 30 inches. All right, let's get the tape measure and get to the first tree. I can only record in between the big gusts of wind, but you can kind of see all of these. I think I have either six or seven. There's one right here, one right there. Another one right there, one right there. So this is actually the biggest tree of all. This one grew 40 inches over the last year, and I'm guessing it's gonna grow another 40 inches this year with this application of urea like this. Yeah, this tree is growing fantastic. Like I said in previous videos, I'm not going to fertilize these things forever, but another year or two, and that should do it. By that time, you'll be able to sit under it and enjoy its shade. Really nice looking tree. All right, we have a whole bunch more to go. There's 12 of these big ones. And then I think six big ones along the road. And like I said, I got some in the woods, some in the woods, some in the woods. So we're definitely not going to show all of these. But I'll get back with you probably when we get to these big trees over here. But we may talk earlier than that. It is so weird being able to drive right up to these trees now. No posts around them. The grass is cut right up to them. It actually would be trimmed too if I could get my trimmers to start. Neither one of my trimmers will start. I'm gonna have to work on that tomorrow. Okay, these are the big two. Actually, that first one grew the most last year and I believe it has the biggest trunk. And it's probably the fullest too, so I'm going to say 
that's the biggest and these two are right behind it. I think I'm going to give these about a pound and a half of nitrogen and then we have that tiny one right there. If you've been following the videos I have a tree right there that was girdled by the rabbits but it's got some shoots coming up that are yay big. That'll grow really quick but that one is going to get 20-10-10 as will the rest of these in the field. All of these are going to get fertilizer that's just spread onto the ground. It's going to rain tonight and wash that in, so that's basically why it has to be done today. Okay, so on this one, you want to go out to the drip line. You can go a little further than the drip line, and you can go a bit further in. And I've explained this in other videos, but I'll explain it again. I always do the spade like that. So if I do it like this, I could cut a fairly good sized root in half. If I do it like this, for the most part, it'll push the root out of the way. It always goes in nice and easy this way. And what I've been doing is just tilting it forward. That's what I did last year as well. I don't know why I did it different on the first one, but this is the way to do it. And you just have your your thing, whatever you're holding your fertilizer in. You just carry that in the other hand and work your way around it. And with this one, I'm gonna fill this one and a half times. Possibly a little more. I went and filled up this urea. I was down to about there. Okay, yeah, I'll probably fill this up twice. That would be, it says one and a half pounds. Now that would be three pounds. I put one and a half pounds on that first one. So I think I'll just fill this up a little more and do the same on this one. One and a half pounds. Let's go. This is the little tree that got girdled by the rabbits. Yesterday, this right here, this new stem, was smaller than this right here. This is all from one day. I'm going to cut these two off and just let this one take its place. And I'm also going to cut this original stem out of there but not before I get a hardware cloth cage around there. Hardware cloth has little quarter inch holes. It's much stiffer than like chicken wire or stuff like that. All right. And something to note about girdled trees like this, just because it has a tiny little growth here, it has a big root system. It has the root system for this entire tree up here for this tiny little tree. This will probably grow three or four feet this year. I'm gonna guess it's gonna get about that tall. We'll come back here at the end of the year and check on that. Well, hopefully mid-year as well. This is gonna grow really fast and I'm gonna give it a fair amount of fertilizer see what that looks like on the ground a little more than half so it has a root system that is probably about two feet out so we'll sprinkle a fair amount the nitrogen will be gone fairly quick but it's gonna really need the other nutrients as well to recover from its damage. That's probably about right, but we'll just use up the rest of this, get it further out. Okay, we'll revisit this one real soon. Yeah, I'm gonna have to make that cage. Maybe I'll make that tonight. I'll make it, oh, probably, about two feet around 
and I believe the hardware cloth is three feet wide so that would make it three feet tall and two feet around yeah I'll have to remember that okay that tree up there is the same age those were planted last year you can see how tall that one is this one was always short because the grass grew up really tall here this was a pasture then and it barely got any light now i'm going to keep this mowed through here so it's going to get a lot better light and i want to clear this stuff all these trees or most of them are dead from a while back i came through here and hacked and squirted them so the vast majority of these trees back here are dead but they still give way too much shade so i should take a bunch of them out okay I'm going to put a full cup on that one, and then we'll head to these other ones. A full cup kind of seems like too much, but because I'm spreading it on the ground, the grass is going to take a lot of it up, and some of it's going to wash down further and get used by the grass down there. It's nowhere near as an efficient way of fertilizing the tree as the shovel method is. A little crispy looking. I probably should have brought my deer spray with me. If you can get past this time of year, all these tiny little leaves the deer just love them. It's like a little snack for them. If you can get past that, they get kind of stiff and leathery, and they leave them alone. All right, hand pull some of this stuff. Got to get my weed whacker working and get over here and whack around these things. I don't want them having any competition. You can see here where the top was bitten off that first year. This is the regrowth here. Top was bitten off here as well. I'm sure this, yep, this one too. These are all regrowths. Hopefully it shoots up there so that it's higher than the deer want to go and these will become like the ones along the road over there. Those are doing really well. Okay, now for the trees along the road. The very first one did terrible the first two years. This is their third year. But last year, these things shot up. They were, oh, I don't know, yay high, about four feet high, and doing pretty terrible. If you look at the old videos, I didn't know if a lot of these were gonna live. Then last year, they just shot way the heck up. And some of them are actually taller, well, actually most of these, are taller than a lot of the ones along the road over there the first ones that were planted so this year this is their third year so i'm going to give them the 2010 10 and i'm going to shovel it in so i'm just going to give each one of these one cup one 16 ounce solo cup of 2010 10 and like I said I'm gonna shovel it in hi kitty show you this tree real quick this is the second one in from the corner this one is doing just amazing ah, this wind 
got leaves everywhere and it's got all kinds of buds on the branches. Yeah, this wind is gonna mess this camera up. All right, let's move down the road. But this is six, seven, eight, about nine feet tall. And I'm gonna guess this is over 12 feet tall at the end of the year and just branched out like crazy. This is one beautiful tree. Oh, and the reason for the 201010 is that this got 201010 scattered on the ground last year, and most of that is likely gone. The 201010 shoveled in like that. The nitrogen will be used up this year, but the phosphorus and the potash will last three to five years. So next year, I'll shovel in nitrogen only on these, and I'll do that for a couple of years, and then I'll just stop. They'll be on their own after that. Yeah, just a beautiful tree. Okay. These trees here, I think, what is there, one, two, three, there was five of them along this side of the road in the woods, but two of them died. So there's only three left now. This weed right here will get five or six feet tall and will shade this out big time. I'll have to come in here a couple times and thin this stuff out. It's real easy to do, but there's a lot of stuff that I would rather be doing. So these were planted at the same time as the trees that I just fertilized along the other side of the road up there. Those are like 12 feet tall, some of them, and, or 10 feet tall, whatever they are. And these are about three feet tall. These haven't gotten much taller than when I planted them, but these took forever to get over their initial planting shock. It's like that took two years and they're finally coming out of the shock now. The other ones came out of the shock last year. So I'm hoping that these pull out, which is kind of like these maples here, where they shoot straight up trying to get at the sun because they're in the woods like this. I mean, these get way more light than those do but those are a shade loving tree. These can't stand shade. All right, that should do it. Two more in here, and then we have one, two, three, four towards the end of the yard. And I believe there's only one left at the end of the property. We'll look for the other one. There was two last year, but I think one of them got Oh no, wait, there was three last year, and I believe there's two left. We'll look for the third one, though. Kind of looks like it was bitten, but I don't think it was. I'm going to spritz this with deer repellent right away. I already spritzed it a couple days ago, but most of this leaf mass is new since then. Yeah, these first leaves, like that one right there, you get a good amount of mutants on these burr oaks, but later in the year they have a second flush and they get some beautiful leaves then. Yeah, I think this one's going to look pretty nice a little bit later in the year. Okay, that other one is right through there. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it or not, but let's take a quick look. This mushroom. That's pretty cool. I don't know. If I was a toad, I'd love to take a bath right there. There's another big one right in the woods here somewhere. I think it's up a little further. I think it's Chicken of the Woods, which is an edible one. This is not edible. Love mushrooms. 
Okay, let's get moving. Camera's gonna shut off any time now. Getting low on battery. Yeah, this one looks better than the last one. I think next year, these will be ready to shovel in some fertilizer. As long as they don't get bitten off again. Yeah, you can see these wrinkly leaves. That's because they're just unfurling. But you get this little black dry stuff and stuff like that. And it's mostly on these smaller trees. Okay, looking good. All right, this last one is pretty tiny. I'm gonna show you that one as well. Uh, I don't know, this is gonna be a long video. We'll show you the ones at the end of the yard if they look decent, if there's something to show. Otherwise, I'll get back with you when we wrap this up. Well, I'll get back with you right there and then we'll see about the other stuff. Oh, look at that. Kind of like fossils. And as I said, this last one is tiny. I'm gonna have to weed around this one right away because these weeds will outgrow the plant in just a couple days. I walk down here every day so I can weed at any time. bugs got at this one you can see where this was it went up that way it was bitten off and then it went up this way just not doing too good I don't know we'll see if it makes it or not I was really surprised to see that this was still alive this year all right I'm right at the end of the yard this one was bitten off two years in a row. You can see there's the bite from last year. There's the bite from the year before. I've been spraying it religiously. And hopefully it won't get bitten off again this year. At some point, if it's a healthy tree, they'll just shoot up past where they can get bitten off. But... These get a little bit of shade and they're taking forever to get tall. There's four trees in this area. That one there. There's one in the triangle right here. One right along the road here and one on the other side of the road from the triangle down there. Yeah, these aren't doing much. Not much at all on that one, and I had figured that one would be doing a lot better than this one this year. All right, let's get this one fertilized real quick. See if we can see anything on that other one. No, it's behind all this mess right here. Okay. I'll just grab the fertilizer and walk down there. The buffalo grass is really greening up. Oh yeah, this is actually looking pretty nice. No leaves yet, but this one forked off right there and I pruned that off so I could get a single tree or a single main stem. Oh jeez. Hard working on a hill. I'm gonna be getting in here tomorrow and killing all this stuff. All this stuff is weed grass all through there. Be killing all that out tomorrow. I'll have to do that a couple times before I plant the rest of this area in this buffalo grass. 
This is going to be a cool looking area. Alright, that should be enough. Yeah, this one's coming along okay as well. I'm gonna have to take these these mats off, but not today. Got a columbine coming out of there. Yeah, a deer would just love to come and bite that whole top off. Really important to keep these sprayed this time of year. Within a couple weeks, they won't give a damn about them, but when you got tiny little leaves like that, it's quite the snack. All right, one more right there, and I gotta go fill up on fertilizer. When this massive red oak fell, the one with Natalie's Ford in it, it almost hit this tree right here. This tree looked really bad last year, and now it looks really healthy. And it's got a single stem at the top. I'm gonna have to be very careful. I'm taking out these two trees in a week or so. And he's gonna be widening this trail and making this corner rounded so we can come down with the gator and just go right around. Right now we gotta kinda of go out that way and do a real sharp turn. Yeah, this one really surprises me. And it's kind of cool that our big old red oak is right next to it like that. It's going to be a cool looking area right here. All right, that's plenty. Get this spritzed up right away. This stuff is made from like hot sauce, rotten eggs, garlic. It does nothing to the plant, but the deer and the rabbits don't like it at all. Okay, now I just got to check on the two, possibly three, at the very end of the property, and hopefully the battery lasts that long. Not sure if you're going to be able to see it or not, but I could see it really good. The blue bells right there, really blue. Okay, let's get moving. All right. Oh my. That's it right there. Get these weeds out of here. That tiny little thing right there. We'll just put a couple sprinkles, let it get a little burst of nitrogen and make sure nothing bites that little thing off. I have no clue if that's going to make it or not. This one I could see on the way down. The other one's in the woods over there. We'll go check on that as well. Yeah, this one wasn't bitten, but it died back down to here. This one gets pretty much light. Don't know exactly what the problem is with this one. Put some nasty stuff on the snack. All right, I gotta refill this and we'll take a look in the woods over there. I don't have a lot of faith in this one. Oh, well, would you know it? There it is, and it's got some growth on it. Not much different than that other one. This one was, I don't know, maybe two feet tall. 
was looking pretty nice and then got bitten down. Have to make sure they don't do that again. Okay, I don't have a lot of faith in this one or that first one we looked at. Well, none of these three for that matter. All right, I'm gonna end this video up by the chestnut up there before my battery dies out. It's in the red zone. This camera's gonna die on me any minute. All right, well, it's not doing too bad. This thing got smashed really bad last fall by the deer. Yeah, not good, not bad, but it is getting tall enough to be away from the deer now. But if they smash another branch like that, I mean, it's gonna take a lot to heal that wound up. All right, let me get this sprayed real quick. Unfortunately, the deer love the chestnut. I should just prune off a couple of these branches down low and get this thing to grow taller. Don't need a bush. I gotta take that tube off as well. I'll do all this stuff with the chestnuts tomorrow. I have to take a couple trees off the road down there to get at the other ones, so can't do that today. So if you wanna see that, Make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.